Welcome to Celtics Post Game Live, presented by your New England Ford dealers and Ford trucks. Scal, Eddie House, Amina Smith here with you. And the Miami Heat beat the Celtics in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals, 118 to 107. And really, it seemed like a tale of two halves. In the beginning of this game, the Celtics looked they were in full control. And we talked about this at halftime. We said, hey, Jason Tatum is a superstar. Jimmy Butler, I think he heard you. I think, I think he that heard you at halftime. I'm blaming you. I said, I said, I'm blaming you. When I watch, it looks like Tatum's on another level, but it takes a whole game. And Amina was like, "Yeah, Scout." No, no, I, I'm, I got 100%. your back, Amina. Hold up, I got your back now, because you also said you were like the Celtics look like they on a whole nother level as a team, and the Heat look like you. You was talking. I was like, "Man, please don't walk us down this mm. path, because you're gonna put us right there if they come back." But. You know, we got it is what it is. A short rotation, man, and and Jimmy Butler, he heard, he heard you. Yeah, Jimmy Butler definitely <laughs> heard you, Scal. Yeah. Jimmy Butler's my guy, <laughs> and he's gonna he's going to do this throughout the series. He's gonna fight for offensive rebounds, deep post ups, get out in transition, uh, in the half court. He's gonna get the switch he likes. He's gonna use his muscles to get to the spots. He's gonna knock down. It's not. I'm not going to say it's ugly. It's not ugly basketball. I, I think it's effective. I like it. But it's not like, oh, wow, did you see that shot that he just hit? But he just beats you. And he gets to the free throw line, and he did his work in the second half. And I, have, I hate to admit it, but Celtics, we absolutely fell apart in that third quarter. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the road, you can't go 18-2. to two. Yeah. That's impossible. Yeah. You're not going to win that game. At home, maybe. But you can play great, but if you give up a run like that, it's over. Let's take a look at how it all went down in that third quarter, taking a look at the numbers right here. Ooh. The Miami Heat, they outscored the Celtics 39-14 to in that third quarter. The Celtics 2 of 15 from the field, six rebounds, just one assist in that third quarter. And then you talked about that run, Scal, 22-2, to that run by the Miami Heat to start that third quarter. Just what went wrong, Eddie? I'll start with you with the Celtics in in that third quarter, allowing the Miami Heat to really just have their way. They, we, we just didn't match their energy and their effort. Um, Miami came out with a sense of, sense of urgency, um, understanding the severity of game one and trying to get that win and not going down 0-1 at home and losing home court advantage. And they came out with a different sense of urgency and a different energy um, collectively, offensively and defensively. And we turned the ball over. We had eight turnovers in the third quarter. And I say, um, I've always said this, and this is even back to the last series, we must take care of the basketball. We can't allow these great teams that we're playing. And the further you move in the playoff, the better these teams are, the more crisp teams are, the more well, the, the better coach these teams are. You cannot give them extra possessions and more and more opportunities to score the basketball or easy opportunities. You want them to have to work for everything that they have to get. And we gave them a, a bunch of plays on a silver platter and that kind of ignited their run got them back and got the crowd involved into it. And once that happens, you know, that Miami crowd gets loud. And when you're not at home, I mean, you feed off of that if you're the home team. And yeah. you, you could go one way or the other. And I think we went the other way. We started forcing shots, and we weren't doing the things we were doing in the first half and moving the basketball, getting easy shots. We were force-feeding everything. I, I didn't expect us, the way we played in the first half, very unexpected. Now, you could chalk that up as, you know, the Celtics are – I mean, the Heat are, are rusty. We're coming off that series. That series was grueling. You would think that there would be some fatigue. Maybe the fatigue set in in the second half. Because in the first half, it almost felt like the Celtics were like, man, this is a lot easier not having to deal mm -hmm. with Giannis. It's a lot easier not having to deal with Brooke Lopez at the basket. This feels more wide open. They're playing with pace. They're, mo they're moving the ball. Tatum's getting downhill. Like, everything was working really well. Miami came back, and I think they knocked a little bit of that rust off, and all of a sudden they stuck it into overdrive. And that's going to happen, but you would expect the Celtics to counter. Yeah. And I, don't, I never felt like they punched back mm. in that third quarter. Like, I, I felt like Miami in the first half, they had their moments where they would make two shots, they would call, they would fight. And the Celtics were dominating the quarter. It looked like they were the better team. But in that third quarter... My, uh, the Celtics, I didn't feel like they did anything to stop that run mm -hmm. and anything to fight back and say, all right, that's enough is enough. 
We had our run, you had your run. Let's play this thing out straight up. That didn't happen. But the Celtics, they were able to cut it down, that Miami Heat lead down to three. But then the Miami Heat, they went on a 17-3 and three run to end that third quarter. Scout, it seemed like the Celtics, they were trying to get something going towards the end of that third quarter. But just what wasn't working for them? So that was going back to the turnovers. But I thought Jimmy Butler imposed his will mm. in that. And, and, and it was the turnovers. It was the steal. And then Gabe Vincent knocking down some shots. But I felt like whether it's, hey, man, Jimmy Butler, you, you, like whether they're having the conversation at halftime, you got to step up. you got to do something. You're supposed – is Jason Tatum the best player in this series? If they're, if they're hollering that at Butler, he took that personal. And we know just by knowing Jimmy Butler that he don't like it when other – he can be on a court with LeBron James and he thinks he's the best player on the floor. Well, that's most of the time. That's what superstars think, right. you know, or stars. You know, you think you're the best player. And I mean, you don't even have to be a star to think that. You always think that you're the best player on the court if you're out there. And I, uh, the main thing was the turnovers. And you know, I, I've been preaching that this whole time that the Celtics been in the playoffs is taking care of the basketball, maximizing opportunities and maximizing your possessions. But I think what happened was in the second half, we looked at a lack of ball movement and mm -hmm. it seemed like a stagnant team. And I said that before uh, at, at halftime, we can't get stagnant. Even if they run a zone, we can't get stagnant. We got to continue to move the basketball, move our bodies and try to get easy shots. We were trying to force feed everything. And what I mean by that, we were trying to go through a brick wall of white jerseys and not making the extra pass and trying to, at, at some point it, it became almost like they were trying to play hero ball. Sure. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to pull us out of this. I'm going to be the one as opposed to being like, okay, I'm going to be the one to make the pass for the guy to make the shot or the guy to make the pass to get a better shot. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, Amina. Mm -hmm. Hit singles, not home runs. Like, once okay. we started going sideways, everyone's like the hero ball, trying to hit home runs, trying to get, you know, a 10-point play. There is no 10-point plays. They all count for one, two, or three, right? So that's kind of what it felt like in the third quarter once Miami went on their run. Let's take a closer look at Jimmy Butler. 41 points in this win against the Celtics. Eddie, how was Jimmy Butler able to impose his will, particularly in that second half? Ah, man, only way to say he was a gangster out there today. Yeah. Um, no matter what it was. It I don't know what that means. Tell me what I'm that gonna means. tell you what that means. This right here. Look, <laughs> Rob Williams, move out my exactly. way. I'm a dunk right here. Mm -hmm. Check this out. You too, Jalen Brown. Move out the way. Rob Williams, you're a little too late. And guess what? I'm gonna get out an open floor. Oops. Another layup. This is what gangster ball is. I'm gonna score on everybody. Look like everybody's getting a little piece of it. And not only was he doing that though, but he was getting steals as well. Look, he had nine rebounds, five assists. I don't have the number on his steals right now, but he came up with two big time steals there in the third quarter when they were making their run and he was finishing. I mean, at the end of the day, when you are supposedly the best player on your team, you're the best team in the East. You were the number one seed and you've been hearing all these talks. Jason Tatum is the best player. I know he's been hearing that, right? Mm -hmm. He blocked Jason Tatum in the corner with a. Uh, there it is right there. There it is right there. So that's gangster basketball. I think you know what? You now that you bring up the fact that Jimmy Butler kind of runs off of that bulletin board material, hearing about Jason Tatum being the superstar, the defined superstar coming into this series, Scout. I feel like Jimmy Butler, he played with that edge tonight. I feel like that block was the emphasis on that. Sure. And he was like, he was like, no, you're not the superstar. I'm the superstar in this series. And, and I wonder if he didn't put a little extra gasoline in the second half on it because of the way that Tatum played in mm -hmm. that first yeah. half. Yeah. He knows that we're talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. They have, everybody is talking about, he oh, heard you. Tatum, <laughs> Tatum, <laughs> took it, Tatum took that step. Like Jimmy Butler's not on his level. I'm sure. I'm. He knows that people are saying that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to hear it. He knows that's the, that was the narrative coming out of the first half, and he wanted to impose his will, and that's exactly what he did. Scout, you, you know this, right? It's the Final Four, basically, right? Yeah. It's the Final Four. So you got the two best teams in the East, the two best teams in the West, and all you hear on all these talks, everybody on these sports radio talks, everything is who are the best players in these series, mm. right? It's not who's the best team anymore. People are just saying, single out players on the no. West. Who are they hey, saying who's the best player in the West? No, no, let's start going down. This is the thing about Miami, and they thrive off this stuff. Let's start naming people, right? Oh, Luka, right? Yeah. Curry, mm -hmm. right? Thompson, Green, right. Tatum, Brown. Oh, watch Jimmy out for Jimmy Butler at the end. Right, they, mm. they don't, they, oh, Miami Heat. They don't right. even say his name. All, but, all, but think about this, even all season long, 
the yeah. Heat been sliding under the radar. They've been oh, the yeah. best team in the East, and nobody's even talking about it. They use that fuel for their fire as well. Like, they understand what's going on, and they got punched in the mouth in the first half. Jason Tatum, it was comfortable. Everything was comfortable, and it could have been a little bit of the rust, but what happened? What happened? They came back that second half and played extremely okay, well. They made those adjustments. All right, 118 to 107, that score down in Miami.